everybody, it's Erin Reed, and welcome to my channel and my 10 cards using one kit, using the June kit from Love From Lizzie, and it's all about being crafty. I love that. So there's all kinds of fun things. If you notice, there's some fun little heads in here and stickers and blue hair. I love the blue hair. And of course, my fun little shabby sheet card. I gotta throw one of those in there every card kit. Supply links are going to be all down below, so make sure you go check those things out to where you can find all these fun things, including the ones that are from the kit and also a few extra supplies I used to kind of add to the kit. Not super, super fancy like craft paper Ooh. and some of the inks I used and some of the techniques like to get the blue hair. So let's go see and check out how I made all these fun cards right now. So let's get started with card number one. I pulled one of the pattern papers. It was this girl's head and the backside was all this and I just something about her just like it paired it with a pink back cardstock and then one of the pattern papers from the kit that is that the plaid now, I know me I'm gonna ink it all <laughs> it also gives it that little bit of a pop that there's another color just a super light hint right on that edge same with this just that little light hint right there on that edge gives that great illusion that there's almost like another layer of color there but there really isn't like another layer of paper so it kind of hides that concept right there. All the cards I'm going to do for this particular kit are going to be an A2 size. So it just makes everything simple. And then add, glue everything down. And just stick everything together. Sometimes you don't need a sentiment with a card. It allows it to be used for anything. And so this particular card, because it doesn't have anything but a little girl's head or a woman's head, it could be a birthday card. It could be a thank you card. It could be a get well soon card. It could be whatever you want. It could be just thinking of you card. There's so many options here. I'm just grabbing a little bit of um, some little post-it note here. And I'm using my Tonic Nouveau Drops. And these ones are in Liquid Mercury. And just getting kind of the pressure, right feeling for it, because we are going to do a series of three little dots right here. So one, two, three. Try and make about the same size, and then we're going to repeat that up here. Now I didn't quite put enough adhesive right there, so I'm going to add a tiny bit more before I come in with my, I got a little bit extra right there, so I'm just going to rub it off with my finger. There we go. Um, I wanted to make sure that was stuck down before I came in because I can't exactly like stick my finger on here and do the same thing. Do one, two, and three. Cap this so I don't get it drying out. And my little hint to you is come back on the back and just do this on the back side of that just to make sure that your little dots are nice and centered and it just gives up that little bit of extra something on this card. There's, I don't want to add a lot of other colors because there's lots happening within her face and just making it simple. There it is, card number one, done. Moving on to card number two, I'm starting with a pink card base and I'm going to use this beautiful ribbon. And my trick is we're actually going to just use a section of it. It's just going to barely peek out and we're going to wrap it around so you have like a little interest on the inside. So I'm just measuring pretty much right where you're going to see just that little bit of a peekaboo. So it's got that little bit of pink coming through about the same amount of pink that's on this side. And then you see that band right there. So it's just kind of a, hmm, wonder what that was all about. So I'm going to kind of mark it with my finger here, come in with my tape runner as best as I can, try and match where I just had it, and then place this down right here, just like that. And then just double check. Yep, that works. So it's just that little hint right along there. I've got a little bit of wiggle room to make sure that I can kind of get it correct on both sides and then open this up there's really no good way to make sure that this is lined up or that you can kind of make it super perfect but we will try so we're gonna just oops is there a misalign my tape runner going all the way through here you can kind of use your finger right here and kind of clean up any boo-boos that you may have made that don't quite work and line this up as best as I can right there. Just put a little bit off right there. So there's going to be a little something. So we're going to put a sticker on top of that just to kind of hide right where that little spot is. 
So we're going to pick, since I'm already using one of the stickers from in here, I'm going to snag, or actually I'm going to use two stickers. I'm going to snag the maker's going to make that. I was playing with this earlier and got a little bit less sticky. So I'm going to run it through my sticker maker and re-stickify it. Just, just we're going to use that sticker maker here in a minute anyway. I just, I was peeling the sticker on and off trying to decide. I, I had a thought in my head and I changed this card about five times before I sat down and decided to film it for you. So I'm just going to pop this right here. If I hadn't messed around with the sticker, you wouldn't have needed to do that step, but I unstickified it. All right, so now we have that. I am going to ink everything. I want to give it that nice, good, clean kind of border going on here. And it also will give that illusion, not illusion, but it will tie in because we are going to stamp the sentiment on here. Oops, that's okay. Give it a little bit of a grungy look. And then go ahead and add that. So that way when I stamp with the black ink, ah, fingers get all caught up. it won't look like it's kind of coming out of nowhere. All right, line this up right here. Give it that same width. There we go, right there like that. See, oops, I'm a little bit off. This card does rely a lot on making it look perfect. If your lines are a little off, it kind of drops the illusion of what you're going for with this card. Okay, next step is, is that I did go and I pulled one sticker and I wanted to had to measure. So I went ahead and laid one sticker on there. So that is the first one. I just picked it up and I laid it on this square. And I measured the square to actually go just a teeny bit bigger than, and make it look like a square because the stickers are rectangles. And it didn't really work with the concept I was going with with this card ink the layers on this right here oops beautiful thing you can turn it over <laughs> makes life easy there we go now we're going to do something a little different with one of those squares but this right here is this beautiful plaid and i love that so i'm just going to take my flower punch and i'm going to punch it and now i have this beautiful plaid flower that goes with everything that is a sticker so that makes life really easy. Now very carefully pull this out and try not to rip my sticker. So pull all this off and then place that in the center with the flower petal. It's a five point petal so facing upwards. And then this is just gonna kind of hit right there. Another one is this little chipboard piece that came in the kit and I believe, yeah, you can see it's already got a sticker and place that right there. And there we go. And then I'm going to turn these all into stickers to make my life easy. And even though this has a little bit of a dimension with the chipboard on there, it'll still work just fine. And I am going to start with this top one. I'm going to kind of roughly lay these on here. I know I'm getting them all on my fingers, but I want to roughly lay, or I think I can come in with my center one. The center one is my girl. And I know what, I'm going to use my grid on my table. There's a reason why I have this black mat down here, is it just really does make life easy. So this is a five and a half inch card. So I'm going to move this over so it's right here. And therefore I can one, two, three, right here. So she is going to get placed right there. And then I can place the cup and I can come in. So this is going to get placed right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with my title and the title we're just going to use crafty girl. I just love the look of that. And I'm just, I'm going to hand stamp this. I will probably pull out my misty layer on, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm just going to come right down here in this corner. Card two is done. Okay, moving on to card number three. Um, I've cut a strip out of the gray paper and I'm just laying it on my mat because we're going to do, oh, and somebody told me what the name of this was called. We're giving it a little point <laughs> of what it basically is happening. So I want to even it up and I'm going to give it a little bit of a flag. And like I said, somebody had once told me what this was called and it has gone poof out of my head about what the name of this is. If you remember, can you let me know again? <laughs> 
it's a banner, it's a little dog ear, it's whatever you want to call it. So simple as that. And doing something simple like that just really kind of makes the difference in a card. Changing the shape and getting away from just rectangles and squares really kind of emphasizes something a little different in a card. All right, so same gray card base. I just snipped a little bit extra off the other half of the paper so we have the matching colors. And uh, I'm going to ink it again, mostly because I'm going to end up having some sections where there's white on white and I want to have a separation. Very, very thin line right on the edge. Nothing too stark. Just a very, very thin inking edge here. Even on the white paper. I picked a very, um, make everything very gray. I want very, everything very, quite stark. And I actually am messing that up. So I'm going to flip over into the other side. And I've inked mostly because I'm doing just the edges here. It's going to be pretty clean. And then my little square here. Very, very subtle. Don't overdo it. There we go. And since I'm going ahead and inking everything, I'm going to do this as well. We'll do my best in here. It's not going to be perfect. Probably could have left that piece alone, but that's okay. Now come in and start layering. Going with the plaid paper first. And whenever I do my layers like this, I always go down by a quarter of an inch on both sides. The original card base is measuring five and a half by four and a quarter. So this piece, this plaid piece, is measuring four by five and a quarter. And then I go down again. And it's a down by a quarter of an inch on both sides. I find that going down by a quarter of an inch gives you that perfect little border, especially on an A2 size card. It's enough to see there's something happening in the background, but it's not overwhelming to the point where it looks like, well, what did you, it's, it's not too much. Now, sometimes I will go less than that, but for layers, I find that this works the best if I'm going to add multiple and multiple layers. All right, clean all that up. This goes right here. Place my last square on there. Square comes in right here, just like that. And this is why I added the black. And if I did it to one, I really did have to do it to the others. And it really does give it that little pop of something right around those borders, especially if it's just a fine line. And now there's a distinction between the white and the white. It really makes everything work. And I'm just in love with these little girl heads. I think they're so cute. You really could kind of grab just about anything. The sewing machine would work. I mean, this is it's fun that you can add in. You could pull one of the stickers you know, kind of have a blast with it, but I'm just in love with these girl heads. Seems like I've done one of the heads on all the cards so far. It's kind of the theme, and even the stamp set that we got has got some girl heads on there, so we're going to play with that too, but right now we're just adding those layers. And then we got all these fun stickers, and there was one on here um, that I think that I loved the best. Oh, I've lost it. I should have pulled it off. There it is. I'm all that and a stack of patterned paper. I just love that. So... We're just going to put that right here. Really simple. This is a very clean in terms of it's mostly a white card. So it's just very simple right on there. I probably could bump her up. I wonder if I could still pick her up and move her. Get a little more of a separation between. There it is. It kind of centers it on there. I like that. And then it's. Because all these sentiments on here, if you gave that to somebody and it said something different, it still works. You know, it's like I'm all that in a bag of chips, I'm all that in a bag of paper. It's kind of fun. I'm going to add stitching, and I should have done this before I did the rest of it. It needs something right here. So I'm going to come in with this black pen and just do the faux stitching right along here. It's kind of my go-to if I need to add a little something, but I'm not sure what to add. So just, and it's going to go right below that sticker I placed on there. There's really no wrong or right way. You could do short stitches, long stitches. I just make them look more like a dash, and it works. If you want to pull out something and actually stitch, you could, but I am not going to get that detailed on a card. I have stitched on scrapbook layouts in the past, but I've never really done it on a card. I've seen them on cards, and they look beautiful, but I don't have my sewing machine out with all the time. I like that. Just a little bit of something right around there. That looks really good. And call that good. And that is card number three.
Moving on to card number four, uh, I took the navy paper, and I'm taking a real big departure here from kind of the theme of the cards. I just, the, these pieces spoke to me, and I just wanted to keep it nice and simple. And so I folded it in a different kind of, it's what you call like a gatefold card, but a really narrow strip on this side. I mean, this is probably only about one, one and a half. Well, this is a one and a quarter inch, so look at that. I didn't even mean to do that, and I did it perfectly. This little square that I cut out of this like mirror board, the silver, is a one and a quarter inch square, and that's perfectly what that is. Talk about being subconsciously wanting to make it the same size. Didn't even try. <laughs> okay, I then pulled out the beautiful, and this is also that purple, so I'm really just sticking with the navy, the silver, because there's a hint of silver in this particular ribbon, and the lavender. The first step I'm going to do is I'm going to add a strip, and we are going to hide the little hearts that are on here. So I'm going to layer just like that, and I'm going to fold this over because I really want to make sure I get my adhesive in the correct spot. So I am going to take my tape runner. Well, I should be able to know which one's the right spot because I'm just going right up against this edge right here. So I'm going to unfold to make sure I don't get any adhesive where I'm not supposed to. And that's the beautiful thing about having like a little mat that comes down. And I am going to well, continue to keep this unfolded. I don't know why I just undid that. And I am going to run my ribbon so that it is right along the edge here. I don't want to have any little hearts that are going to be off. So I am sticking it down and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim my ribbon to be just perfect. And just the perfect amount and have these little hearts fold on the inside. It's going to be a little like, oh, well, look at that. There's something there. So now that it's got this little peekaboo something right there, I love that. I'm going to take the blue ribbon and this time I'm going to add this to my Xyron. While I'm at it, I'm also going to add, no, I don't want to, well, yeah, because I can always pull the sticky off. I'm going to run my ribbon to one side. Well, let's put this in first. Pull it through, get that going, add my ribbon to the other side, get it in there, and yes, I'm having a hard time getting it started. You can use ribbon with your Xyron. It's pretty cool stuff like that. Run it through, get it sticky. Pull this off. It's got nice, good sticky all on the back side. And I am going to place this right smack in the middle, right there, as another layer. So it's a layer of a ribbon on a ribbon, and I love that look. And then clean off that little bit of extra that we've got going on here. So in our kit, we have some more lavender pieces. This lavender happens to be on the strips, and I love these strips. And I'm going to pull a series of the wider ones. There's a whole bunch of different sizes and lengths. And we're going to go through and add a series of, well, I think we're going to change it up. And I am not worried about trying to keep, there is so many strips here, and I'm never going to be using them all. So I'm going to play with the different widths, just kind of pulling one different width at a time. Pull another one now. And the cool thing about this method that I'm going to show you here is that you don't have to worry about trying to be perfect. So if you do some a little bit wider, a little bit narrower, it is fine. Don't worry about trying to make it perfect. So now the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to be a different width again. And I'm going to go close now to the one I just placed. Take another strip and come all the way on the outside. Give it even different width. Really change it up. And then come in and snip them all and clean them up. So now I've got all these fun layers. Come in now with my little mirror board here. I'm going to come in with my little siren eraser, and I'm going to remove the adhesive from the section that I do not want to have the sticky on. So that's what's sticking out. So this is not going to be sticky anymore. I just kind of shifted it, so I want to make sure it's nice in there. And that becomes like your little pull tab that you're going to open. Really secure the rest of this on here. And that is where I'm going to put our little bow. I'm going to come in with my super tight glue. This is just an all-purpose easy glue that everything sticks to everything kind of thing. And then add a little dab right there and then put it right like that. 
Now one thing I like to do is to make sure that this fold is nice and firm. It's the paper's a little bit thick is that you can kind of keep rubbing your finger along it. You can take the edge of your scissors, a bone folder, and just really making sure you have like a nice, good, solid, clean fold right along here. Because this is such a narrow piece, it's going to have a harder time sticking. And that is card number four. All right, getting into card number five, I start off with the other half of the navy base of the paper that I have, this clean separation of cut. And I'm going to go back to the inking. <laughs> I can't seem to get away from it. So come in, easy, clean ink right on the edge here. Really simple. Oh, and I'm going to go ahead and, oops, that was loud, ink the edge of this as well, just to get, get rid of that white border that's on there. Just kind of clean it up. I'm not doing any massive shabby chic inking that I've done in the past. Go ahead and ink this up. Now, with this paper, oops, did the wrong one. So this is just the white cardstock, nothing fancy there. And again, going down by that quarter of an inch on all sides. As I fly things across my desk, that's awesome. Sorry if you're hearing lots of beepings and buzzings in the background. We are officially on summer vacation, and it can get loud around here. All right, so this paper actually came from, I'm going to show you. Uh, the big stripe paper and what I did is I cut the section off that was the green side because I loved it and I paired it with that green and blue with the navy and I love this with like I think I'm going to use this side with the pinks which I think is gorgeous and then I didn't want to have one stripe be much bigger so I cut it so that these two end stripes would be the same width um, and just to kind of make it a little more continuous and then I just cut that section on an angle because I thought that looked really kind of cool. I now have my ribbon here just right here and we are going to just basically cut this to the point where it's going to be right along this border just right along here just perfectly on there all these colors look so amazing and I'm going to do it so that you cannot see that edge right there Boom. Now if there's any extra sticky I just run my finger or I can take my sticker eraser and remove it so like it was never there. It's fabulous. So it gets rid of those oopsie situations <laughs> that I tend to have quite a bit. Come in with my scissors and do a clean cut, like continuing up. So right along here, I'm gonna do it so like it's continuation of that piece of paper. Because there's really no other good way to do this in terms of like you can't really hide the ribbon underneath it has to be ooh I messed that up I didn't do it straight it's okay alright well oh I have an idea in our kits you know necessity breeds <laughs> when you have an oopsie sometimes you're like oh man but you know what we got these little hearts and this is a perfect place to put a heart is on either end here look at that so sometimes you have a boo-boo for a reason and I'm gonna do it like right in the middle as if it's trying to like coming out like that. Probably look a little better if the hearts were just a tiny smidgen bigger but you know what it'll work. So here just lay it right in the middle. Look at that. It's funny how you make a mistake and things just kind of go oops that was sticking to my hand. There's still a little bit of sticky adhesive. I gotta get this in here. It's just so much better. So in the kit, we got um, these beautiful dies, and I love them. And I was playing with them with some of the other papers, but it just didn't quite go with the look of this. But we have this silver paper, which I think is absolutely beautiful, and I think it would pair really well with the colors that are in this card. So I'm gonna run the die through. I mean, look how pretty, and it turns into this button. I'm actually gonna create two of these. And this is the small strip of paper. This is why I don't really get rid of um, my strips. If I'm making a whole bunch of one thing at one time, I don't throw away my small pieces at that moment. But at the end of this, when I'm done with the 10 cards, I will be purging a lot of this extra pieces that are too small. Okay, so I pulled one of the stickers that says crafty and I was kind of playing around with it. So I've lost some of the sticky off of it. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue here. Not much, just a tiny bit. And then stick that down. Just right there like that just super super simple boom done and then I am going to take my two flowers but in the meantime I'm also going to take one of the little um, flowers here that is 
it was one of these signs, sorry, it was this little die right here that I just did actually on the back side. I, I think these are the other colors. Yeah, this is the yellow and the pink, but I'm not liking it at this moment. So I'm turning them into stickers. And I'm actually going to run these guys in there too because they work really well. And I'm basically going to build these buttons and turn them into quote unquote flowers. So I'm going to take the center here, this little guy, pop it in the center here to both. Again, sorry if you're hearing things in the background. It's summer and it's crazy around here. I'm going to take the hearts again and I'm going to place one in the center of each of the little flowers I've created. My kids are going in and out of the house, opening doors, closing doors. It's kind of chaos around here. Place one right here and place the second one kind of catty corner to it, just like that. Just a little something. I mean, they may not look like flowers. Maybe they're more like little embellishments. However you want to think of them like that. Just something a little different. And now I'm just going to place a couple sequins to see if that is the direction I want to go. The sequins are the perfect color. So I've been using my super tight uh, dual tip max glue pen to help me get some really fine dots to help glue down these sequins that I've already kind of placed where I want. So I'm using my katana with this, which is like a little quick stick picker up where it's got a sticky end to it. Lift up, add a dab of glue, just a tiny dab, and then stick back down. Because I've already decided this is where I want this piece. Um, theoretically, you should let your glue kind of dry just a tad, but I'm impatient. So pick up, add a little dab, stick back down. Plus, I don't want to forget where I put them. <laughs> now, some of these really, really tiny, tiny ones, you just kind of do your best with. There they go. Here we go. Super cute. Card number five is done. All right, checking out to card number six. Here we go. <laughs> Moving along, along. Now, there's a lot of layers of white happening in here, but we are going to be amending a lot of the white layers. Uh, we're going to do the stamp first, which is going to go on the smallest square. So for this, you definitely need some sort of a stamp positioner because it is a layering stamp system. So you're going to start off with doing one layer of a stamp. And where's my, oh, here's my little square. Butt that right into the corner. Do your best to kind of pop that down. I'm using a premium dye ink for this. And it's the build a girl is what you're doing. You're building her persona. All right, so what you're going to do is you place your stamp down. Oh, I'm going to have her come right. Actually, I am going to do something a little bit different than norm. I'm going to pull the stamp up just a tiny bit, and I'm going to actually have her place down this direction because I don't want her shoulders. I want it to look like she's kind of coming out of the card. Lift that up, ta -da. make sure that's nice and snuggled. Usually you butt this right into the corner, but I'm doing something a tiny bit different with this. And then for this one, I'm actually just going to use black. And I'm just stamp it up with black. This is just a good premium dye ink. And then come back and stamp it in. Get a nice, good, firm, make sure it's good. And there we go. All right. Now I'm going to push her back down to the bottom. The kind of cool thing about this is that because it is a build your own girl, you can make her however you want. So the things that you add to her and do to her are a little different. And for a long time, I had blue hair. So guess what color we're going to make her hair? And I usually wear my hair. When it was shorter, I wore it down. They don't have like a cute bob haircut. That's not my hairstyle, but I do def definitely do a messy bun. So I'm going to give her a messy bun. So I'm going to stick it on here. And oh, good. I did not make my square too small. Stick that up there. Now you could definitely um, do it. Oh, I need to double check to make sure that I didn't push this out of the way. I think I'm going to try and stick a little, another one right here. Now, I don't want to get in the way of where the stamp is. Let me just double check this. This is the beautiful thing about doing the positioning thing. Okay, that's good. I don't have bangs. I pull my hair up, but this is the closest is what I can make if I was going to consider this a me girl, something close to me. But I've had blue hair. I don't have it currently, but I had it for the better part of two years. Not a whole head of blue, but chunks of blue in my hair. So that's what I'm going with. I'm going to make her hair blue. Just kind of, and it's the theme for the card anyway, is blues and greens. 
So we're going to blueify her hair because why not? So this is kind of a cool stamp or ink system. There's all these fun colors, which we're going to be using some more here shortly. And they pop out, if you notice, which I think is fantastic. They don't have to just stay in there. So it's not a gradient system where you have to stamp a rainbow. You can pull out the colors that you need to. And now I can come in and give her blue hair. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> I think this is the best thing ever. <laughs> this is a, um, a pigment ink. And it can get a little bit smeary. So we're going to do something. So this is my perfect crafting pouch from the Scrap Perfect. And basically, I'm just going to kind of pounce on top of this. It's got a little bit of powder that's in there. And kind of blow it. And you can use your finger now. And it will not smear the stamp. So it goes back to its brilliant color. But it's just, it's a little bit of a powder. You can see that kind of on my finger. And it, it's, it works. It's perfect. It's exactly what you need to do to make sure that your stamp does not smear. Which is what I did. I always wear a necklace, so I am going to add the necklace on here. Actually, I think I can fit it on. No, it's going to look funny. So I'm going to leave. Maybe I'll just make it look like she's got a t-shirt on. We'll do that. So that way she doesn't look like she's naked. Because right now it looks like she's naked. <laughs> now, I just moved that around a bunch. I'm going to stick this right on top because my stamp is not going. So I'm going to make it look like she's not naked. But I put that stamp on backwards because I have done that I don't know how many times. So I'm going to have this coming down from her neck, just like that. But I'm going to go back to the black again. Again, it's giving her, it makes it look like she's got, so pulling it away, it makes it look like she's wearing a t-shirt now, which is perfect. Let's do lips. Let's, let's glam her up a tiny bit. And for this, I can go in with a color as well. So let's go with a beautiful cherry. It's just something a little bit different. And the gorgeous thing is, if I screw this up, yes, I will have to redo this whole girl. But I know what I'm doing now. It's not so bad. So let's hope I don't screw this up. Please don't let me screw this up. That's not too bad. It gives you like an outline of a lip. That's not what I was really expecting it to look like. But it works. So I'm going to come in with that pouch again. Really set that in there. Make sure that's all nice and good. So I'm going to give her some lips of color. Since I already kind of have a color going on, I'm just going to come in and I'm going to finish out the color on this. So just something pretty like that. And then I have green eyes, so we're going to add some green, kind of similar -ish to what I have. And just leave it at that. Keep her nice and simple. There's no need to go overly fancy with that. Done. All right, now on the next technique with this card. While I have this out and I'm working on it, I'm going to, this is another one we're going to be inking a lot of the edges. This one I'm just going to do in black. Some of the other ones we are actually going to do in a color, but this one I'm doing in black. And somehow, I got green on the edge of that thing. All right, so then I have this piece, which this is going to get layered on top of, and I'm going to do this one in black as well. We're going to add, like I said, we're going to have colors here shortly, so that's what we're going to get into next. And then we have this fun color. Now, we are going to be using some of these other pretty colors. We're going to use these two colors right here. So I'm going to come in with a darker blue, which is the same blue I used for the hair. And we're going to ink the edge in that darker blue. Just a nice, clean edge. Kind of bring in some of that color again. If you guys remember what I told you my favorite colors were, were blue and green. I make sure I clean my fingers in between each. Absolutely love blue and green the point where I made my hair blue. There we go. Layer that in the middle, just like that. Okay, so now I have two layers of white. This top layer is the one that we're actually going to be doing something with. Okay, we're making a plaid with this cool stencil that we got. This is a pretty awesome stencil. And we're going to be using the colors that are in this ink. And so to make sure that our inks don't move around on us, that is where the crafting pouch is going to come in. I'm going to first start off with a lighter color. So I'm going to start off with this, and we're just going to pounce. I mean, you can swipe too. That's another option. This is swipeable, I guess is the best way to describe it. Hold your stencil super still while you're doing this, though. You do not want to wiggle your stencil around because that will mess up the look for you. Move my ink over to the side. And there it is. Oops, got a little off there. It's okay. So this is where you can kind of take your stencil, 
We'll line it back down as best as accurately as possible. Careful not to come up here and mess up and just finish those little spots that you messed up. Hopefully you lined it up fairly okay. Now I'm going to take my leave and I'm going to put this right over top of those dots because I don't want to screw up those dots. Oops, and I'm not holding my paper. Hold the paper and continue the same method. And then now you've got a grid system going that way. I'm going to move my paper and that looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I mean, you could just do that and be cool. So this doesn't bleed too much. We're going to pounce this to make sure that that ink does not move and then just kind of clean it off. It's basically setting the ink because I don't want to bleed. I don't want to have it blend. Okay, so now I'm going to come in which direction? This way, like that. Make sure I've got all my stuff. Come in with a darker blue color this time. And we are going to swipe, hold my stuff. Lift that up, look at that. And there is a cool plaid. Isn't that neat? That's such a cool effect. Now this, you do want to go clean. I'm just going to set that off to the side right now. And I'm going to flip this over again. Put the inky gross side down. Clean off my fingers. Pounce this again. Kind of wipe it all off. There's a little smudge rooney in the middle there, but you know what? Some of the stuff is going to get covered up. And then I'm going to come in with the lighter color and ink the edges. This is a border that's going to go just beyond that. I'm going to come back with that darker color that's in there. Lots of layers happening here. Lots and lots of layers. And give it that dark border layer. That stencil is pretty darn cool for making a background effect for your cards. And look how fun that is. You've got this very, very slight border of white. And then you've got this border of blue. And then we're going to back this onto this blue card. So it's all these layers of blue. So pretty. That. So gorgeous. Now going back to my girl, pop her and see how she pops now. She just shines on there. We're going to do this. I thought about maybe doing something else, but I love this handmade because I am. <laughs> and it's just adding a little pop of color, something a little different. Handmade. Done. I love that. So card number six is finished. So we're going to keep this super, super simple. Let the paper do the job for you. You don't always have to come up with the most creative, imaginative, oh my God, it, this is like the technique that is most amazing. It is cool to do those cards. Don't get me wrong. But it is also cool to just let the paper shine. And that's exactly what this paper does. It already has embellishments on it. It says craftiness is happiness. And let's let that shine. So we're gonna just gonna pair this with a very basic yellow background of a card. Keep it super, super simple. Why mess? Done. This is one of those A2 size cards. There's a whole bunch of them. They all come like this. So basically you just, the top and bottom size is already perfect. You just narrow down the edges to make it perfect. Why make it harder than it needs to be? I mean, that's the bottom line. And there's card number seven. Look how simple that was. All right, let's move on. We're going to actually do two cards with the exact same design, but tweaking them a little bit so that they are kind of different from each other. So what I have done is there's a whole bunch of papers that are in our set that come as, I'm trying to find one, little squares like this. And so you can see they're like cute little squares. And these two were able to trim down. This is actually two and three quarters, and this is actually th two and, no, two and a half and two and three quarters. So I put two mats on this one and on a single mat and I did pull some craft paper that is out of my stash and it's not in the kit. But to me, if I'm looking for that extra color that doesn't quite go, craft is my answer. And so that's what I yanked. We're gonna do some inking to help give some, it's just what I do, <laughs> to help give some definition between the different layers that are here. And I also pulled some extra paper. So since this had the gradation of the colors, that's the color I put here. And since this has some like pops of pink, that's the color I picked here. Base card of yellow, base card of white. Just little changes here and there. 
And just to keep things, I mean, I have this ink out here, but I'm afraid it's not going to be exact match and that's just not going to look right to me. So we're going to do everything in black. So all across the board, everything is getting inked in black. And because I still have not gotten my uh, new blade for my paper trimmer, I'm also going to use that as my way of kind of cleaning up the edges. So I'm just going to speed through that up because you don't need to see the inking. All right, so now I have a layers inked. I'm going to show you one card and then just speed speedy through the other. I'm going to do the more complicated one with you first. Again, matting it down so it is a quarter of an inch on all sides down further. That goes down first. Next is my little bit of my strip that is horizontal. Next is my strip that came from that pattern paper that had all the gradation of strips, that rainbow paper. Put that going vertically. No, sorry, horizontal. Now we have a vertical strip. I'm getting confused with myself. And I love this because it's got these little buttons all over it. So cute. And then I'm going to layer these two together because it works better if I layer them as a unit and try and separate them before I put them down. So figure out which side it looks like I inked on. This is the one, actually, this is not the more complicated. This is the more complicated card. The only difference between the two is this one has one more layer with a craft paper in it, and that's it. And when I do the mats of something like this, and this is just going to go up in this corner right here, when I do these mats like this, um, I also do the quarter inch higher. So this is actually three and, or no, two and three quarters, and then the white is a three inch square. All right, so you could completely leave your cards blank like this, but I'm going to see if I can get any of these fun embellishments because why not? They're so cute. Like I love these little pencils down here. So there's two little pencils and to me this lens to kind of come over and why not play with the fact that I've got these cute, two cute pencils and layer them up here in the corner. Just add a little something fun right there. I think because I'm layering them, I'm going to have to add a tiny bit of glue. So I'm going to come in with my super tight glue and just make sure that they are down. It's because each one, even though they're independently stickers, they're trying to like jar each other up. And then to prevent that, to make sure that these really stick down, I'm going to take something, ooh, my punch from previously, and just stick it on top of there and let it dry for a few seconds. While I mess around with this card, I'm trying to figure out what I want. So it says, keep calm and make pretty things. So that could be a lot of stuff. And so, ooh, I remember there is a paintbrush kind of doing the same similar concept. And there are some scissors. There they are. They're mischievous little scissors. And I need to pop out the centers. <laughs> and if you guys have ever noticed in my um, beginning intro, I have paintbrush and scissors on my little, there we go. How does that look? A little off. There, just a little embellishment right there. Do I want to go this way with it? Ooh, that works better. Eats up that space a little bit more. There. So I kind of do that in my title, in my logo. So I got to put this piece down first. Let's get this nice and secure. And the scissors, unfortunately, are going to be kind of floating on top of this paintbrush. So this is going to come right here. And there's lots of layers, so really get it stuck down. And then I already pulled the sticker off of this, and it's going to come and just kind of layer right on top. There's only one spot that it's going to be sticking to, but it should be fine. But just to make sure, because it only has one place to kind of give it some security, I'm going to reinforce it with a tiny bit more glue just to make sure it does not come loose. There we go. This is card eight and nine. All right, we're moving on to card number 10. You know I gotta bring my little shabby chic floral and we were given these beautiful crocheted flowers. So I gotta do something to kinda break it on. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard not to when you have all these pretty beautiful things. Okay, so super layers, super, super, super layers. And I'm going to distress the edges with my scissors. And I don't care about, I ruined these. And they're my Fiskar scissors, which I finally feel crappy about. Distress the edge of this, really get in there, rip it up. This is what makes those shabby chic cards just beautiful. Get in here, get it all ripped up. I'm just going to show you this one, and I'm going to do the rest to all of these layers here. And I've got 
the plaid of the lavender, I have a white, I have that silver, I have another of the plaid of lavender, and then I have a plaid of the gray. Very mute colors that's, you know, not overdoing it with the colors is what really does make these kinds of shabby sheet cards stand out and kind of shine compared to some of the other ones that are out there. And I think we're going to get into some water today. I'm going to show you guys this old school technique, old school to me. So at this point, what we're going to do is I'm going to ink the edges of all of this. And I pulled out, this is called a pastel brown, but really this is kind of a beige. It pulls in that beige color from the flowers and really get in here and ink it up. This is one from Prima and it's a good chalk ink. And this is the technique that's a little different. Okay, so here we go, getting a little messy plain old water come in and spray your paper I know this is weird but it's the way it goes and I like to ink first and then I'm gonna come in and ink a second time and I'm not doing this with all the layers I'm just doing it with some of the layers and it creates this beautiful crinkle technique beautiful layer now you kind of flatten it back out and look at that it really does kind of shabify it up is the best way then come in and all those little nooks and crannies you just made, you kind of hit the top layers of them and it hits those creases of it. Now we're not going to see that much of this, so really a lot of what I just did you're not going to see because this is going to hit up on top, but you keep doing this to every single layer and it really does make a difference. So I'm going to keep doing the same thing, but I will speed through this. Now I'm going to pull out my dual tip max glue. This is a great one for paper and I'm gonna actually grab this other end because there's so many it's the papers kind of all over the place I am going to use this wet glue to kind of hold everything together here so I'm gonna layer these two together just put one on top of the other and nothing has to be perfect that's another thing about the shabby chicness is there's no wrong way to do this and it's just hints of color that's the cool thing it's just these little pops of something and then I am going to ink the edge of the card itself. And it's just a white background card. If I'd have had a lavender card that was that lavender color, kind of like this or this, I probably would have used it, but I didn't have that. And again, I'm going to use this Max, this uh, super tight glue pen, the backside to really make sure the sticks on here instead of a glue gun because things are wet right now. And there's going to be a lot of weight on this card. There we go. So it's already taking shape and looking very shabby <laughs> is the, kind of the goal we're going here for. Okay, now we're going to add a layer of this pop of a like, oh my gosh, this is a dark color, but we're going to pull out my old fashioned edge punch and we're going to edge punch this. So how many of you guys have these edge punches and you have not touched them in forever? Mine may not even function anymore. There we go. And it's getting to the point where it's actually not doing so hot anymore. There we go. I think it had some pieces stuck in it. When you do it, this, this is like my first edge punch, and it might be at its end. You come in. This is a very, very thick paper, and it's just having a hard time getting through here. But I think it's more my punch is just old. Come in and just kind of do this to it. Just fix it up a tiny, tiny bit so nobody would ever know. I, I really don't want to... I, I really need to is get some tin foil. There it goes. Now it's doing it. Maybe it was just too much for it. Or something was stuck. Nope, now it's doing it again. Oh, there it goes. It's just one little spot for that. But look how pretty that looks. And even with the pieces that are missing, it kind of adds to that look. All right, so that goes there. Gluing that down. Get this on the back side here. I am not roughing that up or inking that because it already has kind of its thing done to it. Stick this down here. For these two strips, we're just going to ink them. There's a lot of coverage that's going to come over top of them, so I'm not going to worry about stressing them out too much. Uh, maybe a little bit of distressing here so it doesn't look completely out of place from the other ones. Sorry about that band of light coming right through here. It's just coming through a window, and there's not much I can do about it. It's hitting the slat of two windows that are together. So put this right here, 
and then add the glue on top of that. It's lots and lots and lots of beautiful layers. Again, you may not even know what layers are there, what colors, but it all really stands out. Now we're going to add some layers of purple in here just to kind of get that in there. We're going to layer more to the left than to the right. So I'm just going to put a couple of bands of the purple. So that little bit of something happening on there. And I'm going to take my fine tip scissors for this and trim that up. All right, now this is a die from my stash. It has nothing to do with the kit, but we are going to die cut with this beautiful paper. We're actually going to make two of them. So I'm just going to cut a section. It's such a pretty paper, and it's just that little hint of something extra that I think is needed on this card because there's so many, like there's grays, there's purples, there's whites, there's beige. Very, and this will be that pop of the still same tones, still the same family. Just adding a little extra something to it. And two fires here, and adding, I've got two different sprays happening, but this one to come off the other side is just too much. I'm just going to snip a section off. There's nothing that says that I have to keep what's there. Just a little something coming off in both directions. And this is the kind of card that I'm not worried about sticking within the boundaries. Creating the sprays coming in opposite directions, layering the one layer down. These are actually layered on top of each other. I'm going to snip this little guy off right here that does not belong. Well, and kind of layer them next to each other. Now, in the kit, we were also given these three little charms. I think I'm just going to use one of them. So I think I'm going to take a little bit of this uh, lavender gingham ribbon here and tie it into one of those little charms. Pull it through and then tie a little knot on the end just so that the charm doesn't fall off. We're going to end up sticking it down anyway, but then the charm has something kind of holding it down. And we're going to end up kind of hanging it here right along here and snipping it. So I'm going to go ahead and snip this off. We're going to add a little bit of glue all around to the edges that I know are going to be touching the card. Just coming in adding glue to all these little snippets right here. And then start adding the layers in. For this, I'm actually going to switch glues. I'm going to go with a stronger glue and add my big doily in first. I can always pull. It's just got a little bit more something to stick to. For these, I'm going to stick these two together one here to here, this one to here. Add a tiny bit of little glue to the bottom of this charm so it doesn't dangle too much. I mean, I want it to kind of look like it's hanging, but then it's like an illusion, basically. Now in here, there's a whole bunch of the gunmetal sequins. I'm going to pull a few of those out. I don't need a ton. I just need a few of them. All right, I think I've got all the sequins laid exactly where I want them. I only went with the very, very small gun metals and then the ones that look like they're white or like the pearlescent ones. I think those are the really pretty ones. With the same little method, using this little sticky tool, coming back in with this glue, pick up a little dab of glue, tiny dab, stick it down, and I'm going to do that for all of these. I have one little tiny heart left, and I hate to leave this guy all by itself, so we're going to have one little lone heart stuck in just right up here. What's one of those? <gasps> did she put that there? Well, yes, she did. She's kind of tucked right in there. You wouldn't even know it's there. Unless she looked really, really hard. I sometimes do that with my extra embellishments, so I just don't know what else to do with, and I hate to waste them. And I'm just going to shake my card and make sure I didn't miss a sequin, and I didn't. And that is card number 10. So thanks so much for stopping by and checking out my 10 card using one kit. And this one is all about being crafty, but I did have my little spin and I added something that's a little bit different and completely out of the ordinary for what the kit is. And that's fine. Just because you get a kit doesn't mean you have to follow that path. Just let the material speak to you. Links are going to all be down below. Don't forget to check them out. And thanks so much for stopping by and don't forget to subscribe. Bye-bye.